introduce me this time all right well welcome everyone to our live thing what are we trainer talks <laughs> live trainer and talks this is, this is my I first usually, one yeah. <laughs> this is why i usually do the interviewing <laughs> yeah well it's flipped today and i'm in charge and yeah. i'm bethany and i'm with studio sweat and studio sweat on demand and today i'm interviewing our founder fearless leader katherine calm thank you wow you just used my full name only you are allowed to do that and my friend janelle your guys are the I'm, only ones. No, that's I'm, fine. I'm glad I'm in those good graces. <laughs> <laughs> you sure are. Well, yay. Okay, so last time when we did our trainer talk uh, with Rebecca, I didn't feel like we had quite enough time to get everyone's questions answered. So okay. I know. Look at I'm taking over. I know. I love it. It's, well, because I haven't. I didn't <laughs> do this one last time. I wasn't even here. <laughs> it's just okay. So I'll help guide you if you if you would okay. like. Then okay, guide um, away. So uh, yeah. Uh, I think that you have a couple of questions that you're going to ask me, and then mm -hmm. we're going to leave quite a bit of time for the people uh, that are watching the live stream to be able to ask questions of me as well. I have not read any of your questions because I wanted it to be candid and organic and all that kind of fun stuff. A la naturel. A la naturel. Well, I actually have three. I think you said pick like two questions, and okay. I'm I'm going. I'm taking over. Oh, I'm taking over this. Oh, like this. Can hear you. There yes. Okay. Um, so I, I felt like all of us who know you really have a really good idea of your past and where you came from and why you got into this industry. Um, so I think the question I know I wanted to ask you because I'm picking them. Okay. <laughs> was um, what is your number one tip for balancing out work and family? Because I know how many hours you work. <laughs> yeah. Breathe Deep through breath. That one. And I know the time that you put into the business and the commitment that you put into both sides of the business. Yeah. Um, so how do you balance that all out? Because it's not like you don't have any kids. Not or very well. Or, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> so the short answer, the short answer is not very well. Um, on, you know, the day to day, uh, I definitely feel like I could balance it out a little bit better. But the thing is, when you're an entrepreneur, um, and I know this from friends that are in the club <laughs> that mm -hmm. are business owners, your mind is kind of constantly thinking about the business and how you can make it better. And um, especially with a business like Studio Sweat and Studio Sweat On Demand, I mean, our, we're in the business of helping people. Mm -hmm. And so it's near and dear to my heart. I'm clearly passionate about it. Um, so there, there's no off switch. If anyone's wondering if there's an off switch on her, there is not. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I haven't found it yet. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Except for like when I get really into a show, Brian and I tend to watch, I think you know this, uh, mm -hmm. we watch one show at a time. That's it. And we kind of tend to binge it. And so when I sit down on the couch at night after dinner, um, most of the time I flip that switch or I go play ping pong with Chloe or um, we when we go snowboarding together, like stuff like that. So I... Um, I think the balance that I have now is better than it used to be. Yes. Um, I try to be present when I am present. <laughs> and um, that means no phone at the dinner table, for example. That's something that I started. Uh, you, you do that at lunch too now, don't you? Yeah, I do yeah. try to when I'm eating because, you know, this is in, in working with Miriam and, and her nutrition workshops and intuitive eating. It's like actually tasting your food and just identifying with a quantity and stuff like that. You can't do that if you're playing on your phone, mm -hmm. even if you're scroll scrolling through um, Instagram. So um, just to kind of circle back to your question. Yeah, I was going to say, what would be your number one? Yeah, to be present when you're present. And it's one of those things where it's quality over quantity. So you might not get as many hours with your husband or kids as you'd like, but when you do, make them count. That's probably my number one tip. I like it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. Um, how do you decide which trainers to work with? Going right on into the business. <laughs> um, I want to make sure that I understand the question. Um, meaning like that trained me or that I hire to that work for That you hire to work for the company. Oh, okay. Um, well, I look for things that you can't teach. I can't teach personality. Mm -hmm. um, I can't teach someone to be personable. Um, I can't teach someone to use good instincts. Um, so all of those kind of things are what I look for in a trainer um, over certifications and experience. Um, so I can, some of my best trainers have been completely green mm -hmm. when they came in. 
you, mm-hmm. Brooke, Brooke. Um, Jessica. Jess, one of our newest trainers. <laughs> Hi, Jess. By the way, we didn't introduce Jess. Oh, man. Uh, Hi, guys. Sorry. Good morning. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever it is. Good. Yeah. I hope it's good. Hello. So Jess is our mediator, so she's going to read your questions to me in a little bit. Um, so that's mostly what I look for because I figure I can teach you the basics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I look for things like, are you a quick learner? Um, are you passionate? All of those kind of things that, again, that I can't teach. And um, I think that's why we have such a unique group of trainers at Studio Sweat uh, and Studio Sweat On Demand. And uh, we do take the time, It's a, as uh, Jess <laughs> you know, recently went through this, but our trainers are uh, vetted. They are um, trained and trained and trained and trained some more. And they also have to have a pretty thick skin because yeah. um, we... Because nine years later, we still get trained. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but that's what makes the trainers at Studio Sweat and Studio Sweat yeah. On Demand so fantastic, I think, is that we're always learning. And, and I'm always learning. And I want to encourage that with, with all of our trainers. And I want, I want the people taking our classes, whether they be in studio or online, to get the best. Mm-hmm. And so that's why uh, before uh, someone can even teach a certain style class, not only do they have to have the certification to be able to teach it because that is important to me, but they have to go through trainings with me mm-hmm. and Bethany and um, even our clients. And then we help them perf- to perfect the, the little things that they can. And um, because they're quick learners or I don't hire them, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, it's <laughs> kind of true though, really. Yeah, it's kind of true. So it's it's not like you can just walk into studio and sweat and go, I'd like to train here. It's a pretty grueling process, yeah. but it's worth it. Yeah, awesome. Um, okay, last question, and I know you're gonna say mine, so it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm totally just kidding. <laughs> wow, I don't. I, what, what could it be? In the SSOD library, what is your favorite class? Ooh, loaded question, right? Oh, this is so bad because the first one that comes to mind is mine. Um, Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. No, I understand that. It's totally. so rude. <laughs> um, but my favorite class in the library um, is, and I, I'll start with mine, and I'll see if I can think of another one. But it's the uh, Spin Sculpt Body Changer One. Um, so the original Body Changer. What year changer. is that from? Twenty fifteen. No, that's two. <laughs> I think. Um, I don't know if you just do a search, which a lot of people don't even so know that body that changer feature, one body change. It's just body changer. And then mm-hmm. we have a sequel, which is body changer two, but it's a spin sculpt class. It's quarter based and, Oh, okay. I know that. I know which one you're talking oh, about. Oh, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Um, that's probably my favorite one. And then, um, a, you know, spin sculpt is my favorite class. So I'm always going to gravitate towards those. So probably so my next instructor, ne- yeah, next instructor, <laughs> next I go to, I, I took one with, um, Mayor W recently. You found it. Okay. I took one with Mayor W recently and, and it was a spin sculpt and I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember the name of it. Um, I, I think it had the word lunges in it. So it might, it might've been ladders and lunges um, yes, or something that like that. That is one of them. I do recall that name. Yeah. So that's one of my favorites. And it's funny because, um, God bless you, Mayor W, but I didn't used to love her classes quite as much as I do now because she used to not be able to grab that tempo and tempo mm-hmm. writing is something that it, if I don't do it, it drives me crazy unless you tell me I'm not supposed to do it. Like if we're doing sprints or something. Right. So, um, I've really started to enjoy her classes and your classes, especially to see you guys grow. And, and mm-hmm. even if you can't hear the beat to be able to find it and use she it, makes, and she forces it. us to use it. I do. Yeah, I do. But it makes a better class. I, I will so totally, too. I'm wholeheartedly agree with that. Thank you. You're Great. welcome. <laughs> okay. okay. So those are your three. And then those now we're going to go, um, to Jess and open let her open, o- it, open up. it up. Open Hello it up. guys. Hi. So of course I think it's appropriate to start with Mr. Andrew. That's his first question. Cause <laughs> okay. it looks like he's kind of running this board over here. Is he really? Oh, Andrew. Yeah. What? <laughs> he's, this he's, is shocking. He, he's just, as, he's like just Andrew, as famous as you, man. Are, isn't Andrew supposed to be going to bed soon? No. Andrew's Andrew? in Scotland. Andrew, what are you doing? Isn't it like a 12 hour time change? No, it's uh, uh, eight, eight or nine. Eight, eight, maybe eight or he nine. just had dinner. Maybe yeah. this is his dinner <laughs> watching. What is Andrew's question? Questions. Shun- like oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. It is. Miss Cat, what's your opinion on heart rates? I'm finding you it. Should re- have we one. all have one. <laughs> have a pulse, period. <laughs> End of question. I'm fine. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding it. Really tough to get in the red zone now when spinning and finding running flat out is becoming the only way of reaching red. I often think I'm not working hard enough, but MEPS and calories burned suggest otherwise. 
Andrew from Scotland. Andrew from Scotland. He's in such good shape, though. Well, and that's He's why. Se- oh, I correction, know. it's 7.40. I mean, is my bedtime? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that is Bethany's bedtime. No. Anyway. I'm just kidding. It's 10. 7.45. It's 8. <laughs> um, I'm not so a toddler. I love this question. <laughs> You're about age, as one. I was just going to say, in age or height? Yes. height. Okay, sorry. Height. Let's answer this question. Stop because picking on me. I think it's a good one. Um, it's a really good one. Because it's loaded with goodness. It is. Um, so just for those of you that don't know, MEPS, when he uses that term, is it's, I don't even know exactly what it stands for, but it's your MyZone points. Um, and so those of you that track your heart rate using my, the MyZone system, you're very familiar with MEPS. Um, I've struggled with this too, Andrew, uh, so I totally can relate and get where you're coming from on that. Um, the healthier you get, the harder it is to tap into those higher heart rate zones. And it just is what it is. It's kind of like, you know, when you're in good shape, you have to deal with the fact that your wrinkles might show more. You, you might have like a pulsing vein that, that pops out. You have to pick, um, which is more important to you. Uh, but with, with your heart rate, I know, I know My I went kids on. told me the other day, mom, you have a forehead vein. I was like, oh yeah. Dang it. Is it right in the middle? Yeah. I was yeah, laughing really yeah. hard. It happens <laughs> when you, when it popped. Yeah. So Andrew, um, I, I would just say that you will see adjustments and yeah, if you do want to see more red zone, you do have to work harder for it. Mm-hmm. It's just also like, I've got all kinds of analogies today. It's like when you're losing weight, for example, we've got lots of people out there that we know that are looking to lose weight. And when they get to those last couple of pounds, damn, is it hard? It is so much harder to lose the last three than the first three. Mm-hmm. And, um, that's what happens with, with your heart rate and the, the, the more you train, Um, especially if you're doing interval and endurance training, which we do a lot of at Studio Sweat, um, you're going to see your resting heart rate drop. And you know what? You just got to take pride in the fact that that happened. Because when I started working out harder, um, which meant I started spinning back 15 years ago or something like that, my resting heart rate was in the low 60s. Now it's in the mid 30s to the point where like when I go to the doctor, I'm sure Jess, you get this like, I sit down, and if it's not um, a nurse that I've already seen, they're like, "We're gonna have to get an EKG on you." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You okay? Are you okay? Put the pads on. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna need to get a place me- yeah. placemaker placed on you. <laughs> no, really though. So they'll come in, and then, and then when they take my pulse, they'll be like, "We should have you talked to the doctor about this." And I'm like, "I have." Thank I usually you. get the, wow, it's really low. What do you do? Yeah. Well, that's good. I yeah. would take that. But I think yeah. when you start to get under 40 and it's, you know, three in the afternoon mm-hmm. and you told them. And you, you have just, a cup of coffee. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah, you just finished a cup of Joe. Um, they do start to wonder, but obviously my doctor knows. Um, I was even told by a, a paramedic friend of mine that I should have it on my license. I should have a little sticky note on my license that says RHR. I'll get you a post-it note. Like 36. Yeah, or, or one of those um, bracelets that you can wear that's oh, like the cute. alert bracelet. Bracelets. But the opposite. But the opposite <laughs> of like, hey, I'm healthy. Yeah. And, hey, my heart rate is low. Yeah. yeah I think too, going <clears throat> back to Andrew's question though, mm-hmm. you don't want to live in the red. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to stay there for a long time. Right. It's, it's a shoot in. It's a shoot out. Shoot in a minute later. Come back out again. So you don't really want to spend all of your time in the red. Right. First of all, it's not a whole lot of fun. I don't think it's great for your body. So focus on, you know, popping in and popping out. That it's is a short visit. It's a, it's a short stint. So don't focus on being mm-hmm. in the red for your entire workout. Sometimes I'll be scrolling through on Facebook and I'll see people in our group posting their heart rates. And I think, holy smokes, that's a ton. Yeah. Cause the like 50% of the class is like, red. And I'm like, that's not the goal Well, either. here's the thing though. It's probably not accurate if you're seeing that. And, True. um, so, and it can be, um, discouraging Andrew for people like you and, and like me and Sylvia and some of the people that, and the longer you work out and the more consistent mm-hmm. you are, the less you're going to see, but that's better. It's a good thing. I know that's hard to understand. And he's grass, insanely but consistent. Exactly. Um, and it's what running is something that he started more recently. Yeah. And that's why he's seeing the red zone there. That's why you're seeing it there. Andrew is because it, your body hasn't completely acclimated to that uh, form of exercise yet and anytime you try something new um, your body's going to give you the what what Um, but back to accuracy this is uh, I I actually had a quite a conversation with some of my trainers who were in the red zone Mm -hmm. too much I had to tell them you know your your heart rate's not right in whatever you're using to track it in your um, in this case your my zone profile is not right there's no way that you could possibly stay in t- in the red zone for as long as as you're charting. It's not it's not possible. Yeah. You need to 
Um, in this case, they would have needed to increase their max heart rate in their profile or ask us to do that because, and I would really encourage you guys to do that as well because you want to focus on accuracy, not just like the Yay! pretty colors of red. <laughs> the pretty colors of red. Yeah, you want it to be accurate. You you, you want to know what you're really burning and. Um, it's so great though because it does give you a goal. So just be okay being in the yellow and like and um, you know that's the eighty to eighty nine percent zone. And uh, I even challenged Andrew, who is my friend that lives in Scotland. I've actually um, I met him when we did the UK mm-hmm. Swarm um, in uh, Manchester, which was amazing. And I do want to come back very soon. Um, but um, I challenged him to not go into the red zone at all for, what was it, a 10K or something like that run? Yeah, I think I remember that. <clears throat> and so I challenged him to not go into the red. And like Friday, I did a run that was a list training, um, which is very um, trendy right now and for good reason. Um, list stands for low intensity steady state training. And like that was my workout on Friday. And um, I've really started embracing those workouts. And it's not like people are like, oh, is that because you're older? And I'm like, well, no. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's because <Jerk>. I'm smarter <laughs> um, than I was even uh, yeah. 10 years ago or five years ago. And I've learned um, that there are such amazing benefits to doing those low intensity steady state workouts. And so on Friday, I did a 10K where my goal the entire 10K was to stay out of even the mm-hmm. yellow zone. So my goal was to stay wow. 79% and under and to finish it in an hour. So I really had to focus on my breathing and stuff like that. But totally. Yeah. And I think too, for those heart rate monitor wearing people, yeah. um, your heart rate monitor kind of just confirms for you where you're at. Like it, I use it as a tool to learn my body. Mm-hmm. I would always kind of be on the bike without it and thinking, you know, man, my breathing is really layered. I probably in that higher range. I bet I'm in red. And then you put your heart rate strap on and it just kind of confirms for you where you're at. So it's kind of a great tool just to learn your body oh, I love and say, it. okay, where am I at? Am I, am I really working as hard as I am or as hard as I think I could be? Yeah. You know, if the answer is no, then take it up a notch and go visit that red and, but come back down. Yep. So and I think it's just a great tool. It, and if you don't have a way to track your heart rate, get one or <laughs> use rate of perceived exertion, yeah. which is just do, on your scale of one to 10, how hard do you feel like you're working? Pretty, pretty much equates to like the percentage that we say. So if we say, oh, you should be working at about 80% max, that would be close to your eight out of mm-hmm. 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next question, Jess. All right. So then we have a couple from Miss Liz, who Liz Smart that you guys always see in the videos, oh, yes, probably with know her. usually some neon color on. Is miss you, Liz. <laughs> yeah, she's no, up I in Northern California her. now. I think, yeah, right? she is. Yeah. Wine country up yeah. there. But her first one is: What are some bad things you frequently see us do on a spin bike? Form pedaling, knees out, etc. You know, um, at Studio Sweat, and this is inside the studio, it's too heavy of resistance, which is the opposite of what you're going to see at almost every other place you take a spin class. Um, so I think that we do really encourage people to use uh, resistance. Mm-hmm. Now, we want you to climb that hill. <laughs> we want you to climb that hill. And um, so there are, there are some people, um, and, and they tend to, tend to be the repeat offenders that um, I see mashing, which is where you can see, and I can't, Usually I demo it with two hands, but I have to hold this mic. But it's where you can see a jerkiness. I'm to hold the mic for you. In their pedal stroke. No, it's okay. <laughs> you can see like a, a, a their pedal stroke isn't smooth. And it's because, and you can even see their body yeah. kind of like get Keeping into off. it a little bit too much. Um, and it's because their resistance is too heavy for what they are capable of. And um, so in that case, I would say you need to back your resistance down just a little bit so that you can really smoothen out that pedal stroke. Um, so that's, that's one of the ones that I see in the studio the most often. And she said on the bike, right? So specific to the bike bike. Yeah. She was just curious if there are certain <clears throat> things that you see on the bike of form or pedaling yeah. or well, knees out or what knees out and knees in. Yeah. You do mm-hmm. tend to see that towards the end of class sometimes. Um, uh, I'd rather you err on the side of knees in than, than knees out. Um, but that usually means that, um, either the inside or the outside of your leg is getting fatigued and, and you need to get those knees lined up with those toes. Like that's what, I'll, you know, you want them all pointing forward. Um, but the other thing I see too is actually upper body related. And it's when people are scooted too far forward on their seat. And when you do that, I'm going to turn sideways for you. Okay. So when you know that this is happening, 
is when your back starts to round like this a little bit and, and you might not even be able to feel it. But it's interesting. People naturally seem to think, oh, let me scoot forward. When you do that, now my back's even more round. <laughs> you just like shrunk yeah. down in size. Yeah. But it's the natural size tendency. I know, right? <laughs> Wanted to be Bethany's height. So like, let's say you start to feel that happen. You start to feel it usually in your mid to lower back. You want to fight instinct and you want to take those hips and you want to slide them back a little. And you can see all I did was slide my hips back and now my back is more relaxed and in a, in a better position. So those are probably the two most common things I see on the bike. And then in addition to that, um, just um, uh, people rolling their shoulders too far or kind of sinking into the chest. You actually do want your shoulders to be relaxed forward. I tell people that have jump roped, you want your shoulders themselves, this part of your shoulder to kind of relax forward, but at the same time you keep your chest proud. Right, and that that helps to keep your lungs open. So I see kind of that chest collapse. I would say too. Sometimes people creep their shoulders up towards their ears when they start to fatigue. <laughs> yes, it's kind of funny because I'm like, did you hear if, me calling that out this morning no, to Melissa? Yeah. But if I was fatiguing, like the last thing I would do is like pick something up. I'm like, yeah, drop but it, that drop it, it just down. depends on where their muscles, like where okay. where they're you know, tight. Because it's tight yeah. because then they like shrug it up. Yeah, you, shrug um, it up. this just morning. Don't do that. <laughs> I had uh, someone, I looked over and they, they just kept like pulling them. I'm, I'm like, try to like relax a little bit. I'm like, because she, I'm like, I know it was, the parking situation was stressful this morning, but try and, <laughs> try and relax those shoulders relax. down a little bit. And yeah, it's a natural tendency to wear your shoulders as earrings, I think sometimes. And so <laughs> you just need to try and drop them down, sink the shoulder blades in the back pockets, but let the shoulders themselves slightly roll forward a little bit. So those are the most common mistakes I see on the bike. Liz has some really great questions. I'm Let's having a hard it. Bring time. It. Okay. okay. The next one is, what are you passionate about outside of fitness? Um, my family. Like, yeah, that's probably the thing I try to focus on. Second most is, is my family. And <laughs> there's some other things I'm passionate about. I don't know if I want to go into them. Like, <laughs> are you getting teary eyed? No. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I'm like, no. whoa. I couldn't no. tell either but it's fine i think it was just she's really passionate no i'm i'm really I'm but really, then there's something really, else that she just is ready to talk about no um, i'm passionate about my friends i'm i'm passionate about living um i'm passionate about um <laughs> it's so hard i'm passionate about my business mm -hmm. and you you said working out right you didn't say yeah. i couldn't say my business that's I am, it without fitness but yeah besides without fitness. fitness like do you like to go walk on the beach with your dog do you like to Cook. Oh, I'm passionate like about to, Sandy, my dog. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you like to volunteer? Like, I think she's thinking like, what are else? I what else lights that fire? I, I got gotcha. I, I got gotcha. you. But uh, I'm sorry. To be honest, when you're an entrepreneur here, that it, that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Right. You're you're thinking so much about that. But, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm passionate about my family. I would say, and not just my immediate family, but my extended family. You know, like I, your trainers that are your family and now. my trainers. <laughs> well, it's so hard because like it, to me, it's it's just. I'm passionate about the people that are out there, um, you know, and <laughs> Bethany, um, well, you just got a comment that you need a bigger mug. I would have she to agree. She does need it. She's just compensating, you know, for she's, it's <laughs> soup. There's chicken noodle soup in there. <laughs> I, well, that'd be Sorry. Great. She's actually going to climb in there later mm -hmm. and just take a little It's my nap. bathtub. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I also, I love to go on vacations. I love holidays. And you know, when I, when I go, I do try to check out. And As you should. Yeah. I, yeah. That's your time off. And it depends on what's going on, whether or not I can do she that. She tries her best. I try my best. I try um, not to bother you. But when you're running a business, look, your phone always has to be, your line has to be open. That's, that's well, then the it kind line. of leads into her next. Um, have you ever thought about opening another studio sweat location possibly in Northern California, <laughs> like Sonoma <laughs> County to be specific. That's wow. So funny. Does she um, want us to come up there? Yeah. So is that, is that's that what I think that's, I mean, not, she put her zip code. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She said she'd manage it, she's, but don't worry about it. She's like, I already leased a location yeah, I actually for you. Yeah. It. <laughs> I scoped it I vetted out. several I vetted, locations. Yeah. And, um, I have thought about that a lot and um, talk about circling back. The, the issue that I run into when I talk about opening opening multiple locations is taking away from the location mm -hmm. that I have and the um, ability to service people around the world and take away from my family. Because um, when you do have multiple locations, you do have to go there you if you're going to do travel. it right. Yeah. And um, that would mean, you know, quite a bit of travel. Because if I'm going to do something, 
I'm going to do it right. If I'm, you tell me your job today is to flip pizzas, I'm going to be the best damn pizza flipper that I can possibly <laughs> There is no be. half-butting anything in you. There, nope. No. Uh-uh. Not, not usually. I won't say that definitively, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I will. So, there isn't, so no. <laughs> yeah, I just won't do it. <laughs> right. right. No, no. So no. No. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I, I have thought about it. As a matter of fact, Bethany, remember, we were kind of looking yeah. for locations back a few years ago. Yep. Oh, in fact... It was in San Marcos. It was in San Marcos. Tell Liz to come back to San Marcos. Yeah, <laughs> that we were looking at opening a second location, but instead we just really expanded with Studio Sweat On Demand. So it's not to say that I would never do that because I, I definitely think I would. And where it would be is not in an urban area, but more in suburban areas because that's kind of our, our sweet spot. We don't mm-hmm. go after... I don't want someone to have to pay me 30 or $40 for a single class. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the sweet spot would be, you know, where people needed us. And, and so I think that that's where we would focus. So um, never say never. Uh, someday that very well might happen, especially if you guys keep pushing at me. It's just funny because I get this request often. I was going to say, from we got a request from somebody who wanted it. Like, North Carolina. The East, East Indi- Coast or something. I've had people yeah. in India like be like, hey. How do you feel about... Hey, Dubai is popping. Dubai. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. It's a, travel. It's, yeah. it's a great idea. Um, it's just one of those that you, you ask me what I'm passionate about and to take away from my family mm-hmm. um, and have to travel a lot would be... A huge bummer. It would be challenging for yeah. sure. And you know how I am. I'm. You're going to find this shocking, but I tend to be a little bit of a control freak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shocking. You love me though, right? I just... I'm a perfectionist, and so um, if I'm going to open a studio, I would want to make sure that... Well, you have a product out there, and you want mm-hmm. the product to be top-notch, and mm-hmm. if you're not there to oversee it or make sure that it's happening, it's hard to make sure that product is top-notch and up to your standards. I agree. Like Even like Bethany is the studio manager here in San Diego. Do you guys just feel like a fan come on or something? Yeah, yeah. that's great. So, um, so she's the <laughs> studio manager, and it took years before I would like you know, even trust her and I could go on vacation and feel like everything was completely taken care of. Yeah. But I am at that point now, but it took so many years of a very close relationship mm-hmm. where we live one mile from each other. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she was almost my neighbor. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is true. I actually met Bethany before I even moved to San yeah. Diego. I was still living up in Seattle and I was coming down to search for our, our uh, home and um, Bethany and I met each other at started started stalking her right away. <laughs> yes, she most certainly did. <laughs> No, we were just stretching after a, a horrible LA fit. Oh, uh, l- class, f- class, horrible class. It's, it's fine. Class. One day I'm gonna. Be we both a almost either. walked out <laughs> of this class, and so, um, anyways, okay. So, and then her last one that leads into it is how can women value themselves more in general, especially women who have such goals like you, or mm-hmm. women that come into our gym that want to emulate or you know like just how can we women value themselves more okay um no that's a great question that's like a loaded question on international women's day post oh yeah that was a couple of days ago was that just yesterday yeah Yeah. um so a lot of people really focus on on body type and i'm talking about the physical to start and um, one of the things that I, I really love was a what's an article that Miriam wrote recently um, that was specific oh, to body about. type, and I, I'm not going to use the big words that she used, but basically it's like if you're a greyhound, embrace your greyhound body. Mm-hmm. If you're a chihuahua, embrace your chihuahua you body. To me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a boxer, embrace your boxer body. Um, and I absolutely love that because like Eric mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to you for a second Eric came to me and he was at the age you're older now you're a little older now but he's like how do I put on muscle mass I was like well how do you feel about quote unquote supplements because that's what you're going to need for what you're looking for but you know a lot of um, guys in their teen years and early 20s are always looking for like how mm-hmm. to bulk up and you got to let nature kind of do its thing and you're you're naturally going to start to put on mass um but there's only so much you can do to to change your body type. Now, that being said, um, so that's the first thing I would say is embrace your body mm-hmm. type and know what it is. And um, do you remember what the article is? No, but I remember it being really good. Because yeah. I think I talked to her a little bit about it too. But it was something like Brian had met with her and talked to her about it. I think that was like her opening line and... 
it was like something about you can't change your body type like that is like a preset thing yeah um thank you mom and dad yeah <laughs> right. right thank or you for my yeah. shortness i appreciate right. it but um if you look it up maybe you can find it just i don't know um but it's a it's a great read so i, I would suggest like you read that ago. yeah it wasn't too it wasn't too yeah. far back um uh now that being said there, you can take that to an extreme and use it as an excuse. And so I'm not suggesting that you do that. For example, um, I am of the natural body type celery stick, <laughs> um, which means I'm just kind of straight up and down. Mm-hmm. And so, and I'm not talking about like doing plastic surgery or anything to change your, your body type. Clearly you can do that, but, um, I, I'm, I, can do lunges and I can do squats. And if I didn't do squats and I didn't do lunges, I would have no butt, but I have a butt because I do them. Um, so you can do things within, you know, the realm of your body type to, uh, to, to change it Mm -hmm. and to strengthen it. Um, but you know, and also just to focus on being fit and whatever fit means for you, I think it's really important that we talk to our youth about that, especially our daughters that, Mm -hmm. you know, fight with body image and, um, <clears throat> you know, to just talk about how, you know, you, you know, they're saying strong is the new skinny and, and that's cool, but you know, guess what? I'm never going to be like that strong. I can never squat what AJ can squat. Mm-hmm. It'll literally never happen. <laughs> and I think too, going back to that, I just think whatever your body type is, you can change it so much again. Mm-hmm. And then it comes to a point where you just have to go, okay, this is what it is. I just have to accept it and make it as healthy as I can yeah. make it the, you know, like obviously Kat and I are <clears throat> completely opposite body types. You're tall and long and yeah. I am short and stubby and that's just the way it is. And it's <laughs> like, I can look at your body type all day long and be like, Oh my God, I would love to, to be that body style, but you know what? It's not going to happen. And so mm-hmm. I just have to go, okay, me mentally, I have to make me the best that I can. Yep. And the healthiest that I can. And, and so that, that goes for guys and girls. food yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So I just think you need to go with what you've got and be happy with it. I agree. Yeah. Um, so that's how you value yourself. Take what you got from and physically, rock it. Yeah. Physically. From a and physical then, standpoint. And then also just, just, your, just go after, you know, things that you really enjoy and your strengths. And um, for me personally, and this varies person to person, but, y- you know, if you want something, go for it. Um, but you have to go for it. If you don't go for it, in my opinion, you can't complain if you don't mm-hmm. get it. Um, and that, that means like I have this little sign up in my garage that says, don't wish for it, work for it. And, uh, I'm a strong be- believer in that. And then if you've given something, everything you've got and it didn't work out, that's all right. It's sunk cost. You know, I don't know. You guys, and when you have that mentality, there are going to be failures. So then you have to deal with that, but no, I went for it. I tried it. Yeah. If you had never tried it, you never would have known if you could even do it. Yep, exactly. So So failure is good. It is good. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know that from strength training. You want to work to failure, right? And, you know, every time you do fail, you hope you get up stronger. So, okay. All right. So now Mr. Jeff from Normal, Illinois, would like to know, is your daughter interested at all in becoming a trainer or joining your fitness? Okay, well... (laughs) My daughter is a freshman in high school, so I don't know what she's interested in right now. She's at that age where I'm just like, love her with all I've got. Um, she's out working out right now in our garage. I will, I will tell you that, which is great. So she's kind of like me. You can't really push her into anything. And, um, you know, when I was young, my parents used to try and get me to golf all the time. Nice. Because they lived on the golf course and they bought me the cute little purple bag and I had the cute little clubs and you know what? I was like, "Mm, no, like, (laughs) I mean, sometimes I'd embrace it, but you know, especially when I got closer to her age, I was like, I'm not playing golf. Like, what do you know? Um, and so she doesn't think at this point, I, I have asked her about this, that she doesn't think that she loves, she, she loves to work out. She likes fitness. She likes getting it done. Um, but if I asked her right now, do you want to take over my business? She would say, no, thanks. And part of that might be because she sees that, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's hard. It's work. It is hard. It is work. Now, you know, the person that you were when you were 15 is not the person that you, any of you probably are today. So I don't know. She might surprise me. My daughter tells me I'm mean. Really? Yeah. Cause every once in a while I'll be like, Hey Brookie, do you want to come take a class? And she's like, 
oh uh, that kind of mean no mom you're I love you but you're kind of mean when you're teaching so like she's totally active she works out all the time yeah like, this week she's been at the gym at her gymnastics place every single night this week mm-hmm. um but to get her to come and take a class yeah she is like you know parent the kids don't generally want it that's there's a reason that parent don't parents don't teach their kids to ski you put them in ski school you know what i mean and so i think that that, that's that's the case here too and she really just likes to work out on her own like that's kind of her jam right now so moving yep at least she's moving yep all right so now we have frankie from spring hill florida okay she they said i used to be at the gym five to six days a week but i recently started experiencing major fatigue in my legs Hard to finish a spin class now. Have you ever experienced this? What do you do? Do you take anything for energy? Okay. A latte. <laughs> I'm drinking it. A latte, um, latte. <laughs> well, remind me to come back to that last sentence or the, or the last question. Um, on the leg fatigue, nothing unusual or nothing I didn't know caused. Um, you know, I, of course, I if, if my legs are tired, I usually attribute it to like I really tore them up, you know, yesterday or worse yet the day before, and I'm still feeling it. Or even the day before that, you know, I've had some workouts where I literally felt them a week later still. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but that's, you know, where that's coming from. If you start to experience like a cliff drop, uh, you know, with your energy, energy or your, um, ability to, to lift what you were lifting before, do the number of reps that you were doing before, I would definitely go get that checked out. I've seen enough, um, things in my life to know that you, you, you could have something wrong and it's always worth just going and getting your blood checked. Right, Jess. I mean, see if there's, see if, uh, something dropped. See, there's, there's a lot of different- sodium levels for sure. A lot of people don't realize they try to drink too much mm-hmm. water and then mm-hmm. it depletes them. And then they, the low sodium can give you low energy. There's so much not eating the right thing. There's right. so many things that, and it's different for strokes sure. for different folks, yeah. you know, um, what works for Bethany might not work for me um, when it comes to energy and vice versa. How many days did she say she's at the gym? Five or six? Mm -hmm. Rest. I I mean, rest is huge. I'm now taking... I guess it kind of depends on what kind of classes she's doing those five days, five to six days a week. Yeah, but still, her body is constantly... If she's there five or six days a week, her body is constantly there, constantly getting drained. So that's only like one day But she said she cliff dropped is what you told me. That's how I read that. Like, Read it again. I, I work out five, I work out six, Read it six days a week, pretty much every week. And I used, oh, used to be at the gym five to six days a week, but I recently started experiencing major fatigue. So right. probably that I would take she time, dropped off. She dropped off. Yeah. That's what I think. Off. I mean, your body really needs to recover. You're tearing those muscles. You need to give it time to I mean, repair. there's a lot of people, because one of the next questions is, is it okay to do spin sculpt classes four to five days a week? I'll talk to that next. Um, let's let's finish so Frankie's just, question though. So Frankie, my strong suggestion to you or anyone else in this position, if you experience like a vast difference like this and it's overnight, it's not gradual or anything like that, you need to go get it checked out. I would definitely go get checked out. Mostly I would check my levels, make sure everything was okay. And if it wasn't, then I would deal with it. If I'm low on vitamin D, start eating mm-hmm. foods that have mm-hmm. more vitamin D or taking a vitamin D supplement. Um, is that something that naturally kind of drops off? Yeah. I mean, if, but that would be a slower decline. It wouldn't be a cliff drop like that. So yeah. And I mean, just your, your hormones could be changing. You never know. I don't know how old you are. Frankie, that's but true. That's a good your point. Your hormones could be changing and maybe, I mean, really, but let you, a doctor just tell need you. Some, you need some rest possibly. Yeah. So I would just say, go get checked out. Let the doctor know everything that's been going on in your history, all that good stuff and go from there. Yep. Okay. So, so that's might not be the answer you wanted, but that's, something for energy. Yeah. Oh, and then energy, um, hydration is how I be, get the most energy personally. Um, so before every workout, um, I'll have something that has like 20 grams of carbs in it about two hours before I work out. Generally a banana, um, piece of wheat toast, uh, English muffin, uh, half an English muffin, something like that. That's what works for me. Um, I cannot eat like AJ can eat a burrito like right before she works out. AJ just logged on speaking of. Which, oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. She yeah, literally- she, she's told me <laughs> she that just- she can eat a burrito. She go ahead and crush her burrito. Not that she's doing that. Cause she's doing a great job on her Weight Watchers program right now. Um, and she's balancing out her, her diet and doing great, but, um, I, I'm not that person. And that's where I was saying, like, everyone has like a little different system that works for them, but I do hydrate. <laughs> What'd she say? Yum burritos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the good old days. She's like, I'll be back in 30 minutes. Um, AJ, yeah. I'll meet you for one later. <laughs> um, but, uh, but making sure I drink my water, um, before I work out, I start drinking, um, water from the second I get up. 
Oh and yeah. So me too. no, a lot of to people the second don't, I go though. to bed. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't. Um, when you go to bed, like the only thing is like, I have done a lot of reading on sleep and stuff like that is a lot of people will stop a couple hours before they go to sleep, stop drinking water because then they won't have to get up in the middle of the night and it does disrupt your sleep. Um, but, uh, so I would say before each workout, I get at least 32 ounces of water in within the two hours before my workout begins, or at least I try to, um, if it's really early, I just, try to hydrate more even the day before. So like when I teach the 5 a.m. classes, then I'm just making sure I I would get up in the middle of the night and hydrate Mm -hmm. before. So, Um, and then one of the things to really watch for is if you're experiencing a lack of fatigue, I'm going to circle back to what Jess said, you might have lost a lot of sodium during your workout and your electrolytes might be off balance. So I'll tell people if they are uh, experiencing a lot of fatigue uh, after a workout, like, or they'll say something like, I was so tired all day. And I'll be like, oh, you probably lost too much mm-hmm. do- sodium and you didn't replace it. And so for those people, yeah, I'll, su- I'll suggest a post-workout drink um, or even like a, a Coke. Propel? Pal- a Propel suggest? is like uh, my favorite, but um, I know, but it's, it does have a uh, artificial sweetener in it. And so if you, if that's not your jam, then, then you could even do coconut water. Um, that has a decent amount of sodium in it and potassium and potassium, which is, those are good to replace what like about right like, after your workout. I've heard of like those salt tablets. Would you do those or no? You're, you just made a funny face. I don't know. I don't, I, I just, don't, I do just me, but researched what is good products. First of all, you, yeah. you got to know what you're putting in your body. So you need to know what the ingredients are. And as long as they're an electrolyte based, it's going to put back in, not over your daily limit, Mm -hmm. but to to replenish. Gotcha. That's the idea because what happens is sometimes when you have these really, really intense workouts is, is you do lose a lot of sodium and we sweat from the inside out. Well, that, and do you ever notice like your sweat has a different either, um, to not to be too graphic, but smell. Yeah. It's that's you being hydrated or not. If it is really terrible, you probably need to drink more water. And if it's... It's like pee-pee. Like, yeah. When you're honestly, pee-pee, bright yellow. Like, you just pay attention mm-hmm. to your body. That's how you know, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Next. All right. <laughs> so I have um, a couple people that have the same question. So I'm just going to say their names and then say the question because they literally ask the same exact question. Sweet. So um, Linda and Nadine, they want to know what your workout, your personal workout routine consists of outside of your classes, including how long and how often, and do you choose cardio? Do you do strength training? Do you, what size of weights do you use? (laughs) Well, this is my home gym. Um, this is my sweat room, um, that we're in right now. Um, and I have in here, I have a spin bike and I have a roller, foam rollers. I have a paper plate, you guys know what that's for? I do lots of exercises with my paper plate. Yep. Sliding Anyone can get around. one of those sliding around. I use it as a slider. It's the um, most expensive piece of equipment. It really is. <laughs> I have a TV for my studio sweat on demand yeah. workouts. Jump, rope. um, jump ropes, resistance bands, a TRX strap. And then in my garage, I have med balls and a um, treadmill. No? Nice setup. So I then know. she just says, which weighted moves do you feel give you the most bang for your buck? of all your listed off things, what do you think is your most, ooh, I feel good after that? Oh, oh, oh. Hey, grab my kettlebell converter real quick and I'll show people that too, but, um, okay, I'll answer that and then I'll go back to what my workout regimen is because I know a, cu- a couple of people did ask that. So I really should get paid for every one of these that get sold today, by the way. <laughs> Just today. Um, <laughs> kettle grip made in San Diego, California, by the way. Um, so remind me to grab that. Um, so, okay. So best bang for your buck move for me personally is going to be a split squat. Um, plenty of room to do that. I do have a bench over here, um, that I use and split squats are work. What are what work best for me for lower body because I'm a greyhound and <laughs> I have really long legs. And, uh, so that drop down and, um, and then rise with the, with the foot elevated. That's just what works my glutes the most. And, and to kind of get the shape that I want, at least they're not look like brutal. I said, they're brutal. They're brutal. Um, <laughs> so split squats are, are probably my favorite home exercise when I'm just talking about a specific exercise, you know, spin sculpt is like what I'm all about. And then as far as upper body, um, I'm all about the triceps. <laughs> I mean, I love everything. I love biceps. They're easy to do, but there's only so many different exercises you can do with biceps. So, mm-hmm. um, with my TRX, uh, just the general TRX tricep extension, kneeling or standing is probably, um, my favorite upper body move with the equipment that I have available to me. Um, as That's far funny. as I love working shoulders, 
Oh, shoulders are awesome. Oh, I just love them. I've been really into the the um, heavier weighted lateral fly um, lately. Yeah, I know. You almost murdered me in that class I did of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Tatiana did those today. Uh, so Tatiana filmed an arms and abs class that's coming out soon. And uh, you guys are going to love it. But it does hurt pretty good. <laughs> So hurts so bad. <laughs> yeah, hurts so bad. Hurts, hurts so good. My workout regimen. Um, so I teach. Um, I used to teach about a, I don't know, twelve to fifteen classes a week. Um, as a business owner, I one of the things I was educated on often is that you're supposed to work um, more on the business than in the business. So after eight years, nine years, nine years, I've tapered down and I just teach three classes per week at the studio here. And those classes are a spin sculpt on Monday, a, a TRX spin sculpt, which is basically just a spin sculpt with TRX as a tool on Tuesday mornings. Um, so those are a full 24 hours apart. And then on Saturdays, I teach our 70 minute uh, TRX spin and sculpt class. So those are the three classes that I teach. And as you heard, all of them had full body sculpt in them. And then um, on Thursdays, I train with AJ. AJ is my personal trainer. And uh, I think it's good if, if it's in your budget and you, and you can have a personal trainer to just... One of the things I love is that she has me do different exercises than I would go to, my go-to exercises. And uh, she focuses a lot on um, lower body, back, and chest exercises. I think, too, for us, when you teach so long and so much, it's nice to have somebody else tell you what to do you just show up it's just refreshing and it's Love so it. nice it's different <laughs> it's yeah. nice not to have to write the workout come up with it execute it and yeah. have, just like show up and have somebody be like okay here's what you're doing like uh -huh. that's why i love popping into your tuesday class because it's mm -hmm. like i don't have to think when about did it. you do that yeah i missed if, it if the stars are all aligned I'm in her tuesday she's class. been coming yeah she's yeah. been coming to my tuesday like class. three or four weeks now in okay so let's let's back over what we've got so we've got spin sculpt monday we've got spin sculpt tuesday Train with Saturday. AJ on Friday, which, or excuse me, Thursday, Thursday, which is a lot of strength training. And then I've got another spin sculpt again, cardio and strength training on Saturday. That's four days of strength right there. Right. And it is full body, um, those days. And yeah, sometimes my muscles aren't quite recovered from like a past workout. And for any exercises, I'll just grab like lighter weights for like, let's say that my back's torched and it's time for my Tuesday class and I torch my back on Monday, I'll, I'll just grab a little bit of a lighter set for back exercises on Tuesday. That's it. I'll still work them, still get mm -hmm. the blood flowing mm -hmm. through them. Okay. Then, um, Wednesday. Wednesday is my rest day and, um, it's a much needed rest day at that point. And the reason I do that is, uh, you talk about the work life balance that's uh, become my busiest day at work. That's when I schedule a lot of meetings and stuff like that. And so I always try to call her in the middle of all of her meetings. Yes, she does. <laughs> and so it, it honestly, to try and fit my workout in was getting a little bit stressful. I used to rest on Sundays and now I rest on Wednesdays because I just have more time on Sundays. And so what I've been of late doing is I've been, um, running on, um, Sundays and I've been running on um, Fridays or I will do a brick where I ride uh, I do spinning and then I'll run um, so I reserve those days uh, for pretty much cardio only and I'll try and do one of those list workouts where I'm not pushing it and then I'll add like yoga in on those days as well so Friday and um, Sunday, those are the days where I pretty much am just doing yoga and, or uh, cardio only and then some sort of like stretching or, or yoga. And like I said, the cardio could be running or it could be riding or it could be both. That's so a good mix. It's a good mix. That's my workout week. Yep. It's, it's, it's a busy one. And then once in a while, I'll actually take three to four days off about every four months. I'll take about three days off in a row just for full recovery. Perfect. I might hike or something like that, mm -hmm. but... All right, okay. so now Naomi Hawkins, she wants to know. Hi, Naomi. She is on right now. I know that she keeps commenting. Um, it's funny the conversations that go on on Little here. sidebars. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. it's, <laughs> it's funny, like, who their favorites and what they love about you. And, yeah, they all have so many questions. <laughs> okay, go, go, go. So what is your favorite song to work out to? Till I Collapse Eminem. Perfect. Okay, next. <laughs> what is Done. your um, ultimate vision for Studio Sweat, Studio Sweat On Demand? Where... Is it right now? Or uh, where world is it? domination, um, <laughs> primarily. <laughs> Bye. So I guess this interview is over. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> no, domination. I'm just kidding. Um, no, that's that's a good question. I I'll go with. I, I assume you mean for Studio Sweat and stu uh, Studio Sweat. Look, here's the thing about Studio Sweat, our San Diego facility. It's a lot of people's bars. Like you know, it's where they go to to 
to talk, uh, obviously to work out, but it's where they go to, to just kind of like de-stress, you it's know, their happy place. It's their happy place. Their it's where home. they can come yeah. and it's just their hour. And like the, we've, there's been up and downs with studio sweat oh, and sure. without studio sweat on demand, I've told people, um, studio sweat might not have made it because it's such a competitive, um, landscape, uh, constant, you know, fitness businesses coming in well, next when, door. When and when you first opened, we were the only thing in town. Really, We really were. It yeah. Was like it was like, drinks. I am kicking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're totally endorsed on here. They're ready for your world domination. Ah, oh, <laughs> sweet. Let's do it. Well, you guys can help me. Um, the best way that we can do it is as a team. And it's just in spreading the world, um, word. So with Studio Sweat, honestly, the goal with uh, our San Diego facility is just to keep it going and just to keep it flowing. I don't want to have to charge. Now, like to stay open, I would have had to start to charge people more, start charging people more. I didn't want to do that. I've mm -hmm. talked to you guys about, I, I want our fitness solutions to be affordable. I want everybody who can to be able to come and, and work out with us. Um, so I'm, I'm honestly happy keeping the status quo. I know a lot of people would be like, what? what? Um, because that's not something you typically hear me say. Um, but with studio sweat on demand, yeah, I want to grow it, but I, I don't want to grow it to the point to where we sacrifice good customer service. Mm -hmm. Um, so we kind of, I'm not looking for venture, venture capitalist money to help me grow it. Um, and I, I, I think that matters because if I wanted that, you'd see, you'd see me if I, I'm the sole owner of studio sweat and studio sweat on demand. If I collected resources, <laughs> yes, we could also have we could have commercials during football games and the Olympics and all kinds of stuff like that. But that's not where I want to go with it. I, I, that is not my vision. Um, my vision is to get as many people working out with us as, as I possibly can, um, online around the world. And, um, but I think that there's a certain way that we get there without compromising our values and our brand messaging. And, um, there's, there's a couple of areas that we're really growing in, and one is our commercial segment, where we are offering Studio Spet on-demand workouts into commercial facilities, um, planned communities, fitness studios, gyms. And so if you guys ever work out at a fitness studio or a gym, um, I'm not saying this like it sounds kind of like an average. Do hotels fall under that? Hotels. Yeah, if you want to see Studio Sweat On Demand available, we have a new um, kind of branch called the Sweat Pro where um, we can display our classes into, uh, or, or so that people can take them when they go to the YMCA or the, their gym or um, their planned community fitness center. So that's one area that we're helping, uh, that's helping us grow. And then the other thing that um, we're working on is um, getting in uh, with wellness providers. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you, for example, like we would work with a company's HR and their wellness program and the company would then buy studio sweat on demand licenses for their employees. So that's one of those things where, you know, right now we, we help one person at a time and I'm going to keep doing that. We're going to keep doing that. That's, that's our primary focus is, is helping you guys and making sure that we're servicing you and that we just keep getting better and better. And, um, but if we can get into companies and get their employees to help subsidize this, this is, or excuse me, the company to help subsidize this for their employees, then we can get a, a you know, a big group of people fit and healthy and happy mm -hmm. all, all at once. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we're really um, hoping that we can tap into more and more. So if you guys, if you want your company to buy Studio Sweat On Demand for you, just email on demand support at Studio Sweat dot com and we'll get someone in touch with your HR department or wellness um, coordinator. So yeah, does that answer that question? Mm -hmm. Very much so. Good. Yes. I mean, I'm thoroughly educated. So that's how we can dominate the world. <laughs> I am okay? too. Everybody, so that's how we can dominate you, the world. Together. Now you know. Yeah. Now you know now the you plan. Know. Yes. <laughs> Business plan in place. Yeah. There you go. Go. <laughs> okay. Noelle would like to know. She says she's having a baby in two months. Congratulations, Yay. Noelle. She's been doing light workouts because her doctor suggested it to dial it back. Mm -hmm. She was wondering once she does give birth after the baby and she's ready to return to workouts, what Studio Sweat On Demand classes do you re recommend that she starts getting back into the groove again? Okay. What type or what? Well, part of it is going to depend on if she has to have a C-section or not, which I don't know if you can ask her, but, um, uh, does compare your recovery time. It, it does. Yeah. It can, it can change your recovery time. So, I mean, it really just listen to your body. Um, Miriam was working out within two days of having little Oliver and 
That's, not normal. That's the exception, not the rule. Yeah. So I wouldn't suggest that. Like Rebecca. For the normal. <laughs> exception. Typical everyday Rebecca person. would probably teach a class and um, give birth at the same time. She would. I got she would. this. I, I got, got it. Don't this. worry. I had an instructor that went into labor like on the treadmill and oh, she's Lord. just like, no, just another mile. I'm like, get off. <laughs> I'm like calling her husband. I'm like, geez. And she taught till the day after her due date. And I finally had to tell her enough. Like, get off that bike. And we've had a lot of people that worked out up to due right date. Right to it. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. Um, but don't feel bad if you can't either by the way for I those of work you out that are through uh not th- not at all through my first pregnancy but a you a little bit through my second but mine were also really rough so I think that depends on well and were you doing. working out before then like I, I was mean, yeah yeah okay. I was but I was just got too busy throwing up oh yeah that's not it fun. was rough yeah. um so to get to her specific question, um, it, it, again, a lot of it just really depends on how your recovery is going. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I would start with some of the shorter classes for sure. Maybe focus a little bit more on strength training. But you know what, sis, you can get on that bike pretty soon, like after you deliver, assuming all went well, um, and you get the clearance from your doctor. Uh, so there's no reason you shouldn't just you – know, a lot of people don't miss a beat. You know, they get back in, but they start doing their regular classes right away. But you just got to do what feels right. Mm-hmm. So let's say that you, you can do your spin sculpts. You can uh, – you know, if it's not something you did before, it might not be a good idea to do right after. So, oh, um, like, let's say that you didn't do yoga fo- before. Oh, it doesn't mean you need to just go into to yoga because you think it's going to be easier because it's not. You should see Brian do a yoga class. It's <laughs> hilarious. He struggles so much. How about just stretching? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Right, so, your toes. Yeah. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty. So I would skip, Sorry, um, I would skip you. The, the short answer is you can start getting back in with any workout that you feel comfortable doing. I don't think you need to hold back unless your doctor specifically tells you to yeah. the things I would not do probably, uh, until, you know, a few, two to three months after delivering it, I probably would suggest that you avoid plyometric moves. Um, you know, those explosive moves, mm-hmm. but you can do like uh, lots of variations and we're almost always giving you guys variations. So like if, if they're doing a squat jump, you can just do a squat and power up on your toes. You don't have to do the jump part. You don't need to shake that up yet. Yeah. Give it a little while. Yeah. I would say just get cleared by your doctor, get yeah. the green light from him or her first of all, yeah. and then just really listen to your body. And if something doesn't feel right or just a little bit off, give don't it a week it. You know, in general that heart and maybe start with some of the recovery rides that you guys have done because i've heard those are amazing yeah you can start with the recovery so just rides. get those but you know get that blood pump and get it going and just listen to your body would be my best for advice. sure but you might find you know i would definitely start with like the shorter classes but mm-hmm. i mean people in the studio don't have that option when they come back they're back like it's an yeah. hour it's yeah. go time um but you got to do the things that are smart, like maybe start with lighter weights than you did before. So maybe totally. if you went with, um, it, it's, it's just even the slightest difference is, is amazing. Like if you go with eights instead of the tens, you mm-hmm. know. Oh, we didn't answer that other question. That's so by the way. I was just going to try and circle back to it since you were talking about it. She, what was it? Oh, no, we did the go-to moves. I was just going to show no, you guys. No, but like, what your, um, this your is my... specific weights that you use for oh. upper body, like what weights? It completely depends on the exercise that I'm doing, but. Um, body part. Yeah. So let's start. Okay, back. What do you use for back and buys for you? Well, it depends because if I'm doing a back fly, I'm going to use like a eight or a 10. But if I'm doing a row, I'm going to use like a 15 or 20. Perfect. Okay. Then what about when you go to triceps? What tricep move am I doing? You're doing an <laughs> extension kickback. Tricep te- um, extension or, or a tricep kickback. I would probably use uh, 10 to 12s depending on how many reps we were doing. And then next your shoulders. Well, overhead press. What are you going to do? 15s. And then you're going to do a lateral me. raise. Lateral raise, I would probably use uh, eight for if it's a straight Well, I out. think that helped answer. Literally, everyone wants to know what weights you use. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. now you answered it. I think, per- too, when perfect. <laughs> I don't love, like, just spewing out the the weight number that I use because that's appropriate for me. Right. right. You know, Kat has been working out forever. I've been working out forever. Um, we all have little injuries along the way. I'm and sorry. I think did you just call you guys old? Is that what? <laughs> she nice, <did>. Bethany. Forever. <laughs> yeah. Forever. Father time here. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. I know that's a question, by the way. I, but I, we've built up to that. So I think somebody won't, I don't want someone to go grab. Like, what Kat to, does. Like 15s to do an overhead press. Cause yeah, Kat the, said that's what she does. It's like, no, you need to work up to that. Oh yeah. That's start a, with the approach. Or maybe they just for you. want to know. I'll tell you that heavy weights. For me, I used to consider 10 pounds my heavy weight. Now I consider 15 to 20 my heavy weight. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, my, I'm not bulky from that. You know, that's an old wives' tale that you're going to bulk up. If you're not taking testosterone, you're not going to. Um, but uh, my mediums used to be 
sevens and now they're tens mm-hmm. and my lights used to be fives and mm-hmm. now they're sevens or eights and so I worked my way up so that's yeah. a good point Bethany. so pick the appropriate weight for you not just because it's what cat does so there's the debate <laughs> of what is your cheat meal and if it's not a meal what is your cheat naughty snack well, you guys know about so, Donut Sunday, right? I was just going to say, so Satoka <laughs> chimed in and said it's a donut. It's Donut Sunday. And I was like, yeah. I don't know what it is. This is a really good thing that I'd like to talk about, though. So the reason that I implemented Donut Sunday in my <laughs> household is because donuts are, they're just, they're kind of my Achilles heel. Like, I love a good donut. Really? And yeah. I and, never would have guessed that. Yeah. I, I was like, like trying them. to... <laughs> Yeah, oh, oh. you know, you know, I know, this, I just, but, I don't get it though. But it's, it has to be a good donut. But anyways, so, <laughs> so that I wouldn't crave them during the week, I implemented something in my household called Donut Sunday. This started when my kids were little, tiny. And every Sunday we have donuts. And the cool thing is when I did that, all of a sudden I didn't crave them the rest of the week. Um, because I knew I got them on Sunday. You got yourself a specific so, day. Yeah, and yeah. I could pass them up cool. the rest of the week and, and be just fine because I knew I got them. So if you have, um, you know, your craving, I, I don't think you should completely deny yourself that, um, you know, it's one of life's pre- pleasures eating. It, it just is. Well, I always remember too, if you said you deny yourself for too long, you're going to find yourself in the closet with a whole bag, bag of, of Oreos. whatever it is yeah. that you're eating. Yeah. So in I, I wouldn't say indulge, have it, enjoy it, yeah. savor every bite of it and have it every once in a while, yep. have it every Sunday or whatever it is. Exactly. Nope. That's so that's probably, that's it from a sweet perspective. And then I'm like everybody else. I love me some pizza. <laughs> Pizza's good. And I don't have it that often, but I do love it. But the thing is like what I've learned um, throughout the years is with pizza, pizza used to be a meal in itself. We love spaghetti. Spaghetti used to be a meal in itself. It's not anymore. Spaghetti is our side. Pizza is our side. We still have a protein for our main dish. So anytime we have pizza, we have a chicken salad with it, like a spinach salad. So that way I'm not just trying to fill up on on the pizza, but I'm still getting a slice of pizza. You know, Mm -hmm. why not? It's okay. But I I only (laughs) have like, I only have one slice, whereas... And it's not Costco size, you know, whereas before Mm -hmm. I used to, if if pizza was what's for dinner, then I would have two, maybe three regular sizes, not Costco sizes. But when I, when I make it my side dish, then um, I still get to indulge in. That's a totally different mindset too. It is. I like it. Thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. It's really helped us. And yeah. Brian, too. It's really helped yeah. Brian, too. I have definitely seen the photo proof of a donut sundae. That's so now right. I know. I don't hide yeah. it. I, it now I know. It's out there. I, I like even, it. you guys are going to crack up, but I bought the uh, web domain donut sundaes. Are you? I did. I love it. <laughs> there has love even it. been sundaes where. <laughs> I'm not using it, but if I ever want to. <laughs> it's it's there. It's yours. She's got it. There's been sundaes where Brian has shown up on my doorstep. With a box of donuts. Yo, yeah, Brian, he's so sweet. Uh, Brian, I, let me tell you where my new house is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah drive up You're to, not yeah, to, to Mecula, please. All right, come and bring it to let's me. see if we can get a couple more questions. Okay, right now. so this one is a longer one, so I'm just going to try and preface it with. Um, so it's Elaine Vaughn, okay. who has been part of SSOD mm-hmm. for five years. Yeah. Uh, which obviously she says she started when she was 42. She's now 48. Okay. She's had some significant surgeries. Okay. But she wants to know her ultimate question is have your workouts or fitness level shifted or changed as you have aged? How have you personally? That's a great question. Um, I still consider myself young. I probably will be a hundred and be like, no, I'm still young. (laughs) Um, but, (laughs) um, the, the funny thing is my workouts have changed, but kind of going back to what I said a little bit earlier in the strainer talk, it's because I've gotten, more experience, wiser, wiser, um, more seasoned. <laughs> um, no, honestly though, I, um, I've learned so much even over the last, uh, six to eight, nine, how long has studio sweat been? Nine. nine years. Um, since I started training well at studio sweat and then I was a trainer before that as well as a side job. But the things that y- you continue to learn should change your workouts and, and your workout style. And, um, so one of the main things that I've changed and you guys see this in our videos is that I don't need to keep up with the beat of the music when I'm doing my floor work. Um, sometimes I'll use it, but one of the things I do like personally, and, um, I encourage my class to do is go at their own pace push yourself. Yes. But with good form. And so everyone likes to talk about those 2012 glasses and I hear, yeah, they were pretty insane. 
there. <laughs> we didn't have a cadence sensor then. <laughs> and um, we were free riding. And, um, and we were a little crazier. Yeah. And, sure. you know, and since then we've learned like, oh, you know what? A lot of studies have shown that it's better for your entire body to work between 60 and 110 RPMs, not to go over, not to go under, and here's why. And so my workouts mostly have changed, not because my fitness level has gone down, but because um, I've just grown as a trainer. And I, I honestly feel like I'm better at leading classes today than I was then. And um, I think about the long game more than I did back then. And I really encourage everybody to think about the long game and not when they're 30 and not when they're 40, like mm -hmm. from the second you, you know, encourage our youth even. Think about the long game. And the long game means you don't have to kill it every single time. Um, is it good to push and do those hit workouts? Absolutely. Sure. It's also good. You know, I'll say this when we're doing a, you know, sprints on the bike, the recovery phases are just as important as those sprints. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you have to work a little harder for it when you, um, you know, every year that ticks by, you, you have to work a little bit harder. Just like we were talking about with Andrew at the beginning of this talk, you do have to work a little bit harder for it. Um, you know, I see friends that are premenopausal going through menopause. It's going to happen to every single one of us mm -hmm. ladies. And, and it's going to be harder. Um, it's going to be harder to maintain our shapes then. And, and I think that we just have to kind of do our best, get through it, embrace it, um, embrace the suck <laughs> that will come along with that. Um, and, uh, just work smarter, not harder. That's I think, I think for me too, it's been interesting over the last nine years that I've been teaching. I've had a couple mm -hmm. surgeries also. I've had a major surgery and I feel like every single time that I've come back, I've come back a little bit stronger. And Good. I think it's just because I've been working smarter. And I think also I've learned how to focus more on my nutrition. Yeah. And so I think our just our focus has changed just a little bit too. It's like not not every single workout has to just beat us into the ground. You yeah. Know, you talk about those steady states and how important those are. And I really think those are important in the mix of all of the workouts. Mm -hmm. Not every workout do you want to be coming out of and have doms for three days and be so sore you can hardly walk. Like that's not the goal of every single workout. Delay of muscle soreness yeah. syndrome. It's <laughs> doms. <sucks. laughs> it's brutal. It's yeah. like when you do a workout and you don't get sore until three days later and then you're like, holy cow, I feel like I got run over by yeah. a truck. And it's like that's they were, not the, It's because the muscle tears were like, they were so bad that they were like numb. <laughs> right. And that's not the goal of every workout. Well, the inflammation is so gnarly that right. then once it wears off and then it's like, oh, this hurts. Oh We've been there. It hurts. It's still yeah. okay to get there sometimes. Absolutely. But not every single workout. Well, for so sure not. I think not. you got to work yeah. smart as we age. Yep. So that's been the biggest, <laughs> that's been the biggest change is, is that I've gotten smarter with my workouts and hopefully you guys, you guys will notice that if you, if you mm -hmm. look at those 2012 workouts, yeah, I was, I was ripped and you know, I was doing, as you just learned 15 workouts a week, of course. Um, but that again, coming back to life balance, I couldn't sustain that and no. do all the other things. I couldn't have opened a launch studio sweat on demand, you know, so, and maintained 15 workouts a week and, and seen my kids. So who? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Those guys? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> okay. So I'm not sure. You still have a few questions, but you tell me what you want to... Um, are you guys okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so well, they're not like... They're not... I mean, they're not necessarily... I like what's, what's your favorite song. <laughs> I know. That's yeah. why I was like, next. Okay. Go <laughs> for it. Fire. Okay. And if you guys this have to sign is... off, thanks for joining us. I totally understand. And it was it was actually Just really... Yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> oh, jeez. It, it was nice to be on the, the other end. I usually do the interviewing because I really do enjoy that. I've gotten a lot better at that. Eric has seen me through the years. Um, that's not one of our questions. Yeah, okay. Sure. So <laughs> Shariah, Shariah, I'm not positive. Sorry if I just butchered that. Um, she wants to know what a lunge alternative you have um, because she does have bad knees, she says, and she does enjoy the sculpt classes and the boot camps, but doesn't feel like she can always do the lunges and yeah. is wondering what she could do instead so that she doesn't have to skip out. But That's a great question. Um, so just so that I you get more information than I'm going to give you in my 60 second answer. We have a vlog out there that's called knee friendly exercises. And so I would encourage you to check that out. So just go to uh, SSOD trainer tips, um, on our website or app, and then do a keyword search for knee and you're going to find that vlog. 
Is that um, the funny one that we did? We also have a spoof, oh, which so is... Oh, okay. She's not talking about the funny one, but... Okay. Yeah, you definitely sure <laughs> you definitely need to... When you t- do that keyword search for knee, Bethany and I have this one. They're, they're like the opposite of knee-friendly yeah. exercises. It's, it's going to be funny. about the funniest 90 seconds you've ever yeah. experienced. So watch that as well. But <laughs> go find that vlog and check that out. Um, but the thing is, like, we have other people that can't do lunges that come into the studio. We never discourage them from coming in. And I'm really glad that you asked this question. So you're going to do any lower body exercise that you can do, um, without experience, experiencing pain. Um, there's a straight leg lunge, which you can do, which basically means that you're just, um, bending the front knee and you have such a wide step that your back knee is not bending much, if, if any, um, deadlifts are a great go-to. They work your legs, um, all over and they work your core. So a deadlift's a good one. And then she didn't say she couldn't squat. So pop it like a squat. Yeah. You can do any of those squats. And, and the thing too, is you got to just play with stuff to figure out what works for you because maybe a sumo squat doesn't hurt you. Um, but a regular squat does. Or so, maybe a reverse lunge hurts where a forward lunge doesn't. So play with the movement too. Yep, exactly. But have a go-to move for when you're doing the spin cl- sculpt classes. Have um, some heavy weights, meaning kind of extra heavy weights that you can use for a deadlift and just go to the straight leg deadlift. I don't mean the the deadlift where you bend your knees, but kind of like the, the, the soft knee deadlift, the straight leg deadlift where um, your knees are just a little bit soft and you tip your hips back and... Um, so that would kind of, I just kind of pick a go-to move, even if it's a go-to move of the day that, that I'm using. So just always have something in your back pocket that you can use. AJ, um, just said a wall glute raise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good one too. So she's saying, put your feet on a wall, um, bring your knees to a 90 degree angle and then drive your hips up and then drop them back down to the ground. So that's a good one too. Thanks Thanks, AJ. AJ. Yeah. (laughs) There's, and that, that's one that you'll see in that vlog. So, yeah. And you can do that with your feet on the floor also, if you don't want to make shoe marks on your wall. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Danny Clark. This is kind of interesting. He wants to know if you'll ever pop. Hello, Danny boy. I know. I'm like, say, oh, I like him. That's why I want to, there's certain ones I'm really trying to get in. Cause I know these people are really active on the comrades. All right, so. let's get it. Let's so get he it. Says Danny we, actually, he's amazing. He picked me up from the airport when I landed in Manchester. Aww. What? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, he's so a he bus wants driver. to know. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, isn't he in public transit? Oh, I have no, I don't know. I don't think Danny just ignore her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Don't forget. Her Anyways, hair back is to blonde. what is Danny's question? He wants question? to know if you're ever going to pause to pat yourself on the back for your success. <laughs> oh, have you been talking to Brian? <laughs> I, I wonder that. Thank you, Danny. First of all, I appreciate that. Um, or not until you, you got a goal in sight. Well. <laughs> When we do have complete world domination, I might. Oh my gosh. Um, until then. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, there's even the little victories, right? And I think that that's, that's you know, one of those things that, that he's talking about too. But I'm in awe every day um, with where we've come with Studio Sweat On Demand and, and the team and, and you guys. And um, it all started with just and I'm not going to get into the whole backstory, but with, um, a friend of mine and some people up in, I lived in Seattle <laughs> and, said, um, ignored Danny to you. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. See, you were wrong about Danny. He's not a, I was like, he's no, pretty sure he's not no shame and bus driver. I'm pretty but, sure he's public transit. Danny, what do you do? I'm sorry, Danny. Anyways. So, um, I put a webcam in the ceiling. Remember Eric, that's where we're going to start. And, um, we were just going <laughs> to webcam our studio sweat classes for my friend up in um, Seattle. And when I moved from Seattle to San Diego, I just had a lot of pressure from, um, and it was loving pressure from um, my, like, you know, stopping a wound <laughs> um, from bleeding, but to continue to be able to train them. And I was like, I can't, I'm leaving. I love you guys, but I'm leaving. But anyways, um, after constant pokes, 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 I did find a way. And luckily I have a technology background. So that's kind of what was a catalyst in launching Studio Sweat On Demand. But um, I, I remember when I got, when we hit 100 <laughs> all access pass holders, mm. and I was the only one that called out that by the way, back then, um, yeah, I, I, who was this emotional friend? Janelle Embry. Yep. She's calling herself out. Yeah. She's yes. like, I think it was, so she knows. <laughs> yeah, she's the one that was the most and relentless. Then Sylvia somehow chimed in and said, I think it's you, Janelle. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Janelle is, she was relentless. Okay, um, he's in, I have energy, to energy, inter- engineering. Oh, Liz just texted me and said, Gary is the bus Gary. driver. Gary. <laughs> See? <laughs> Liz. UK also though, I that's why. You, so I guess Liz is listening. I asked so, I want to text you back right now. <laughs> 
Anyway, so when we got our first 100, Don't like I like I did a mini celebration, then I got right back to work. And that's kind of how entrepreneur entrepreneurs are. You have to stay very steady. Um, you can pat yourself on the back uh, for a moment. Um, or you can do maybe a tiny victory lap, but then you got to get right back to work. And along with that, you can't, you can't ride the highs and you can't ride the lows. You have to stay pretty steady because it would just be a really Mm -hmm. stressful, horrible life. And you've said that for a long time. I remember you saying that probably on studio one. Yeah. So I don't, I, I, I try not to get super duper excited when really good things happen. Um, and that's where Brian will come in and say, babe, like, I can't believe you just did this. I can't believe you just got your first corporate account. I can't believe you mm-hmm. just hit, mm-hmm. um, you know, when we hit 5,000 all access pass holders coming from 100, you know, I was just going to ask and that cause that keeps coming in. What's the question? How many online subscribers are there now? Yeah. Um, well subscribe. Okay. Keep in mind, we have tens of thousands that are hit our site, um, right. all the time, like daily, monthly, uh, daily. Um, I think, um, some of them will be buying single class downloads and stuff like that. But from a subscriber perspective, we're at about 8,500 or 8,500. And like I said, I was really excited when we hit a hundred. Right. <laughs> um, and so of course, uh, the goal this year is just from a consumer standpoint, we want to hit, a, <laughs> we want to hit 10 grand at least, you know, but who would have thunk, oh, right? But they want to know what your good elevator pitch when they run into someone and they're trying to get like so pumped. To, I mean, this is a great question for me. Okay. Here too. All right. How do you pitch them? Like, how do you describe Studio Sweat On Demand in like a pinch? Like, yo, this is my gym. Let me describe it. Get hooked. Uh, <laughs> Ready, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm really, really bad at this. I'm actually the worst salesperson there is. Um, and I think that's why I'm actually good at selling studios went on demand because I believe in it. So if you just describe it using your experience, uh, Actually. with it, that's, you, you, that's going to be your best bet. If you talk to it, like you, you know, like if I'm talking to my best friend and telling them about studio sweat on demand and what it is. And, um, you know, I, I would stick to our key differentiators, which are r- real people. So when people watch studio sweat on demand workouts, they are going to be watching real people, real, amazing certified trainers working out with other real everyday people, just like you and me. Um, we're not about glitz and, you know, glamour, glamour. and plush you know, New York apartments or anything like that. We're, we're just about providing real, amazing, in-studio quality workouts for the everyday person. That's, you mean that's our what bay we're door about. doesn't open up to the Zen garden outside? It doesn't. Oh. No, <laughs> a parking lot, actually. Shane, I don't yeah. Yeah. push a yeah. button and it opens. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I mean, that's it. If you want, if you, you want do. variety. You tell someone to do it. <laughs> I do now. I'm yeah. like, Kevin, <laughs> open it. <laughs> So just, um, sorry, by the way, I'm bringing pat her back. on the back because that's what Danny said that he anticipated your answer. Thank you, but Danny. Pat her anyways. I, I really, I do appreciate that. You guys, I, I'm amazed and I'm in awe and I'm humbled by what we've done together with studio sweat on demand. I, it, sometimes I just shake my head like, wow, I, I can't believe how far this has come. Um, but I'm just, I'm always so focused, Danny and everybody on how can I make this better for you? Um, that, I, I just, I just go right there, but thank you, you guys, you guys and the, and the results that you describe to me, and I don't just mean weight loss. That's fantastic. If you lose mm-hmm. weights, but the, it's more like the ones that really get me are people that are off their meds, um, that they started and they were diabetic and now they don't have to take meds anymore. Or that just were like, like uh, when you think about Andrew, you know, he lives in kind of a remote area in Scotland mm-hmm. and he doesn't have a lot of interaction. He has interaction with people around the world and he's made some of his best friends through studio sweat. And it's, it's that kind of thing. It's, that's one of our other key differentiators is community. Like, do you, do you want to be a part of something bigger than you? And we mean it, you know, then hop on to studio sweat on demand and join the comrades page. And you're going to find some instant friends that really, truly care about and support you. It's amazing. So, so I think the last question, um, that also was asked quite a bit, okay. um, is just what is your, it's, he's, it's from Baden Davies. Okay. Once again, I hope I'm not butchering that. It's, I think um, it's Badon. Badon. B A. I'm totally you messing with oh, you. Was, whatever. <laughs> whatever you say is gospel. So sure. Cat's right. Um, okay. What? Badon. <laughs> Chloe has Mr. some friends Davies, coming how about over. That? But listen, Chloe has some friends coming over, and she asked me to like purpose purposely butcher all their names. Like Kevin, I'm going to call Kevon, and like, oh, like Denise. There's a Jaqualin. 
for yeah. Jacqueline. Yeah. But all there's that a kind of, D, you know that. D nice. She's on the my zone. Yeah. She's one D of the, nice. yeah, she's one of the comrades. She asked to follow me on my zone and I saw it come up and it's like D E E dash nice. nice. And I was like, D nice. I was dying. Anyways. Okay. He wants to know what makes for a great spin class. What do you he or she just in case Bailey could go either way or baby. Ba- oh, anyways, Baden. I don't know. They don't necessarily what makes for a great spin class Hills endurance flats tempo. What is your ultimate spin class? Well, there's not just one, but um, for you, well, Hills you had to literally hills and sit drills. down right now and write a class. Hills and, and drills. Like that's my favorite. Class. Got it. I love, um, <laughs> well, you guys know how times. much I love me some prime climb. Um, prime climb and prime climb two are probably two of it's my Baden. favorite workouts. I did get it right. Baden, good I, job. Um, is Baden a he or she? When is maybe a prime time a three, four, five, six prime out? climb? Yeah, um, I love climbs, um, and so I love climbs more than I do the fast flats. I, I like both, but I love a spin workout where there's a lot of climbs, uh, climbing. There's a lot of jumps. Um, those are my favorite. They're not necessarily everyone's favorites, but I do love the the jumps. Um, and so if, if he. I he okay very good <laughs> thanks Baden um and so but I do love hills and drills which is one of the most popular videos that we did actually release on YouTube and people take it over and over and over and if that's you get an all access pass and stop the madness <laughs> my jokes must get so old <laughs> um they can say I'm now yeah too. but I love the the bounce back and forth between a hill and a drill and so hills and drills is probably where, where I'd go if if I was down to my last one. But I also really, really enjoy varying the the cadence that we that we write at. My favorite cadence, in case you're wondering, to write at is about 75 RPMs. That's my favorite cadence. But no 80, right, Bethany? No 80. Oh, oh like man, 80. I stink at 80. Me too. 80 is, well, there's not that many, but you know, it's so funny. I like it, but I have the hardest time staying, staying there. on mm-hmm. 80. Oh, really? That's so funny. Oh, well, till I collapse is 80, 81 RP, 81 either, BPMs. So if there's a beat there, or I can slower. do it. But if it's not, I go. So, I struggle. Yeah. That's funny. Anyhow, so I like the combination of, of the hills and the drills. And the drills, and I love those workouts where we go endurance drill, interval drill, endurance interval, endurance interval. But at the same time, like I love when I just focus on one or the other, I love those workouts workouts that, you know, it's great when you're bouncing back and forth between the two, but you think about prime climb, right? That is flat out endurance. That is just, you're going up, you're going up and you're going up some more. <laughs> and I love those too. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone here did loves your prime climb, that they're oh. all like hearting your little prime climb. Oh yeah. So. It's, it's, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Well, I think sure. that that, um, wraps it up. There's so many questions they always want to ask, but a lot of them are really similar. They all want to okay. know similar things. And so. yeah, we've been going for an hour 20. They're yeah. probably getting so, real yeah. bored. They're oh, like, no. oh, I get. well, maybe they're just like cleaning their house and just listening. You know, oh, it's like a podcast. True. Yeah. Dude, like I when we, go, oh, by the way, we are house. doing, um, you know how we did the sweat gives back. Um, yeah. speaking of people that are just like eating popcorn, watching our classes or watching us work, um, <laughs> uh, that happened last year when we did our 24 hour ride. So that is coming up. Um, I believe it's May 19th. We're going to do another, uh, another 24 hours another 24 hour ride Ooh. uh will be live streamed the entire 24 hours um it's for our sweat back gives back initiative that's another thing that um ryan and i are both passionate about is passionate about is giving back to our community and um you got to keep in mind that our community is not just san diego it's the mm-hmm. entire world mm-hmm. so um watch for that we'll, world, we'll, world, we'll domination. Share. world domination baby <laughs> uh, and yes these pants um i did get a little something on them but the these pants you guys can see they are coming soon we have our new so spring line coming out and so i i'm kind of uh the the guinea pig for trying out some of the new merchandise that we're going to be offering so they've been asking about those pants oh I said, yeah yeah I coming soon they're coming soon probably. and they will be available in black white and red fun i think or and maybe even green Yes. yes, but when we say green, we're I not mean, talking olive. Kelly green, Sorry. lads and lassies. Not Liz Smart green. No. Like forest green? Like yeah, like uh, camo about? green. Camo, I call it camo green. green. Yeah. yeah, so that's going to be kind of our go-to color for I the spring sometimes. line. So, yeah. You don't know. Anyhow, we better sign off, you guys. We've had people with us for so long. So thank you guys so much for <laughs> yeah, asking me absolutely. all these questions. It was fun. Yeah, and now you're very familiar with what a trainer talk is. I know, my first one. Yeah, you won't mess it up next time. Yeah, <laughs> and if you guys want... I will. <laughs> If you guys want more trainer talks, just comment and and let us know. Um, I think we already have. Do we have our next one lined up? Who is it? We do not. We have do our, not. Oh. Well, because we're kind of just seeing how it goes, and people hey, love it. So who you, do you know, you guys want it to be. Yeah. 
Yeah, you guys can you let guys us know. Can so let us know. You know, you got. Uh, I'm just trying to think if you want one of the dudes, Mike or Brian. You did Rebecca. Rebecca yeah, we did went Rebecca. First. I Mike, suppose we should probably do one. Of those Mike guys. would be pretty awesome. Um, oh, he's if fun. you guys haven't spent any time with Mike, um, one on one or or <laughs> in a conversation. He'll blow your mind. Yeah, he's right super intelligent. Deep conversation deep. Right there. Yeah. He's extremely witty too. And he's got that dry wit that I really appreciate. So he might be a good one. And a lot of people have asked for Mayor W. And, um, you Liz know, there's smart would like bright green, bright green. See, bright I knew. Green. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, that's why I was really trying to like, that's I know her, people that's really look to color. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is. She looks cute in it though. I like I can't wear that color on my face. All right, you guys, let's sign it off. Check it out. Adios. Thanks guys. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.